You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody, that music means we are back. We are live for the option block one final time here (laughs) for the mad maelstrom, the mad tempest, call it what you will, of the year that was 2021. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever exciting Options Insider radio network reminding you one final time here as we wrap up the year if you haven't done so already make sure if you're just listening to the option block you're missing out on a ton so subscribe to the full network that'll get you everything we will keep you busy with options content if nothing else and of course if you want to go above and beyond join the live check out the exclusive programs the options slash secret club is the place to go to check out that parte and of course However, you listen live after the fact. By the way, we're coming up against it last couple of days here for December. So if you want to get in there for the trading crate, the secret options insider, awesome trading crate full of crazy bespoke items. I'm still I got a, looking at a pile of them right now over here across the studio here. Then get in there before the end of the month so you can get entered in the December drawing. Of course, however, you listen live after the fact, hit us up. Questions, comments, insights, pearls of wisdom. We do love to hear from all of you guys and gals out there. Let's see who we're hearing from on the show today. Dear, I say it, I don't think we've ever heard them like this before. Let's go out first to the quiet hinterlands of St. Charles, where we are joined fresh and clear and with lustrous sound by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the program. How goes your new Larry King era, sir? Have you gotten the suspenders yet? And you got the mic. You got the suspenders? I got the mic, but I need the suspenders. So loving how this thing is so far. I, I need to interview people and uh, uh, I don't do what Larry King does because that's how I feel today. It's not like you're right next to me in my ear. I love it. I love it. Uncle Mike's right here. Let's see if his compatriot, the Rock Lobster, is equally smooth and lustrous sounding. Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Now, it's a challenge to get quality sound out of the far hinterlands of Maine. He's pretty much the last stop in this here continental United States listen, but we did our best. So let's beam him in now. Mr. Rock Lobster, do you too have the rich, lustrous sound of one Uncle Mike? Uh, You tell me. Do I sound (laughs) rich and lustrous like Uncle Mike? It sounds like you are right next to me as well. I love it. I love it. Hopefully you like it as well, listeners. It's a gift to them, but also really a gift to you folks. You're welcome. A new 2022 of fantastic listening as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. 
It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, listeners, let's do it. The final trading block of 2021. You know, going through some of these numbers and looking at some of the, the trades and trends and data points from this year, I'm struck at how some things that I was convinced were in 2020 were indeed in 2021. And some other things that I thought were very recent were actually last year. It, it was one of those crazy years where in some senses it just rocketed by in other senses. My goodness, doesn't it seem like January 6th was a lifetime ago? <laughs> and yet. Not even a year ago yet. So crazy, crazy times, of course. Well, we'll get to all that looking back in a second. But first, let's set up where we are right now. And of course, you know, it, it wouldn't be appropriate. It wouldn't really be right if we weren't green on the screen to end the year and pretty much at or threatening all, new all-time highs in every major index to end out the year. That's pretty much the way things have been all year long. I think 70-odd new all-time highs. For the S&P this year, I think you got to go back to the dot-com madness to really find anything that equals that. So we're in rarefied air, to say the least. Uh, VIX coming into the start of the show, a little bit shy of the 17 hand, about 1690. Actually ticking up a little bit. It was a little bit lower. Starting to get a little bit of froth back here. It was still down from our last show, down about a little over a handle, about 1.1 points from this time last year. In terms of VIX at about a 107. Down about 10 points from our last show. And VXX, the product everyone loves to fade. Getting some more fade on. 1840 when we kicked off the show. Down about one, almost one and a half handles. About 1.4 points from this time. Last show. And UBXY, 1235. Man, a 12 handle when we kicked off. It just had a 20 handle not too long ago. Down almost one and a half handles as well. About 1.4 handles from our last show. We'll get to all the highs and lows and everything else in a second. Oh, Vol Q. I forgot about Vol Q. How could I forget about Vol Q? 1780 when we kicked off the show. Down a little over half a point, about six tenths of a point from where we were this time on Monday. All right, let's go around the horn. Before we get to the madness of 2021, let's start where we are right now. Let's go back to the deep, rich, and lustrous sounds of Uncle Mike. Mr. Uncle Mike. What is lighting up your tape on this final option block for 2021, sir? Wow, it's hard to believe another year has gone by. And I believe this is our 10th year-end spectacular. So uh, we've been doing this quite a while. Uh, so what's lighting up my tape is that we're, we're knocking on the door of all-time highs to end the year. Uh, we're seeing that. 10-year uh, note is just tinkering right around that 1.5% uh, yield. So we're seeing that. Uh, not a ton of movement in, in silver. Uh, we're up just a little under 1%, but for the most part, I think it's just kind of a slower day. Uh, like I would have, like what I typically expect the last week of the year, which the last week of the year has gone exactly how I expected it to go with the exception of Monday with the doors being ripped off to the upside. Uh, but everything else has been kind of quiet in this market, which is normal the last week of the year. So with that, uh, I think that, uh, Quite honestly, there's really not a ton to talk about today. Uh, we we do have the Omicron variant that's coming out uh, that seems to be uh, the latest fear of a potential shutdown. Uh, I don't think it's going to be nationwide like it was in the spring of 2020. But I know out here in the, the suburbs of Chicago, there's a lot of talk about shutting schools down again, which is very concerning. But my hope is that uh, they realize it's not quite as uh, nasty and deadly as the previous one and that uh, kids can still go to school because I really don't want to do Zoom learning again with my kids. I love my children more than life itself, but I don't love them at home all day when uh, there's perfectly good schools to go to, quite honestly. So that's probably the big news right now in terms of where we are with this market. But if that's the big news and we're at all time highs to end the year. I think I'm okay with that. So that's what's lighting up my tape right now. I'm sorry, Uncle Mike. I didn't hear any of that because immediately as you started speaking, I was just lulled into a sense of hypnotism by your deep, rich, and lustrous sound, sir. So I hope you said good stuff because I was just carried away on the tones of your voice, sir. Well, I mean, I, you know, the other one I kind of feel like is like uh, primetime wrestling. I think Gorilla Monsoon had a microphone like this as well. That's what we were going for. We were going for the Gorilla Monsoon look for you. We knew that would resonate <laughs> with you. Uh, let's go out now to 
he has his own little hamlet there. I guess we always talk about the St. Charles Hamlet, but the Giovinazzi Hamlet there on the shores of Maine. They're pretty much the only people living there, so it's kind of their hamlet, I suppose. <laughs> Mr. Rock Lobster, what is lighting up your tape and the tape of Volman this week, sir? I was just, you know what? I just was having a small uh, conference here with the crickets uh, that are hibernating for the winter. I thought you exterminated all of them with how they ruthless sound. efficiency. I thought you had cricket aside going on over there. Yes, yes. So they're uh, there. Yeah, we we did, we did, but they came back. So they they saw the new microphone and they like they can't wait to see how sweet they sound in the springtime. So just be forewarned, listeners, that they will be in all their glory. <laughs> Um, uh, as far as Volman goes, we do have a low for the month today as of right now. Um, we have very steep contango. So that normally means that all of the vols, uh, in the terms, uh, are lower, uh, in the front than they are in the back and they're getting steeper and steeper. So the market is starting to gird for lower vol. Um, so that's, uh, that's an interesting thing. Um, and I don't see that trend changing. I mean, we keep having this Omicron news, like they just, uh, you know, the CDC said, don't travel, don't travel, don't go on cruises. Right. And, uh, like zoom went up 5% and Carnival Cruise Lines got smashed and, um, all the airline stocks, oh, actually AAL is up uh, 20 cents. So, we might get to that point. Do you guys remember, like, uh, you know, when Trump was always talking about the Chinese trade deal, we got a deal, we could not have a deal, or, and, and like, it was always, like, the, the best buying opportunity, right? So he's like, ah, I'm going to be tough with the Chinese and the trade deal, and the market would sell off. Always a buying opportunity. I am starting to think, um, as this year goes on, with this uh, more mild Omicron variant thing, um, that... I think people start fading this, you know. I like right now. I would fade the, I would fade the huge rally in Zoom, and I would, <laughs> I would look at some cheapy uh, calls to buy in the cruise stocks, just because. I don't think people are going to stop going on cruises, to be honest. Um, so, uh, I think that's and that's how we're ending at least this year. With I think instead of it all being doom and gloomy, I think the last time we had the Omicron, you know, remember the market sold off, we got almost a 30 VIX, and that was at the beginning of the month. We don't uh, we don't have that anymore. So at least for right now, I don't, like the cases are going up, but nobody really cares. So I think for 2022, like that Omicron news is, uh, or the COVID news might be like a more fatable uh, thing. Yeah, I'm looking here right now. Uh, Carnival is still down on the year, down a little over a handle, about 5% on the year, even though it has rallied quite a bit. It got down to, it's about a 20, a little bit shy of 21, about 2070 right now. Got down to 1638 at the beginning of this month. So it's seen by many as, you know, the, the one of the big turnaround names. So to, to watch kind of the chart of this, of this name throughout the year is kind of uh, synonymous with overall market sentiment for how the pandemic is going. And remember those days of the on again, off again, Chinese trade deal? It seems quaint now by comparison, compared to what we've seen over the past couple of years. Speaking of the past year, let's go back out there. And it is our last show of the year. So it is time to look back upon the madness, the maelstrom that was 2021. Let's start with, you know, our the trajectory we've had across a lot of our major products, in particular, the ball products we like to look at. Like I said, kicking off the show, VIX was a little bit shy of the 17 handle, 1690, down a little over a point since our Monday show. Of course, we started out the year in a very different vol regime. We were at about a 27 when we kicked off the year. VIX closed on January 4th, which was the first trading day at about 26.90 or so, 26.97 or so. So right below the 27 handle. So comparatively much more elevated than it is right now. And then we saw, and this is the question I'll put to both of you later. We saw just the, the madness for the year. It seemed like it maybe topped out a bit. In January, because we certainly saw from a vol perspective, we saw the apex in January. A little over 37 and a quarter was our closing high for VIX for the year. And that was at 37.21, actually. That was on January That was on January 27th. And uh, we never really tested that again. We got into the low 30s back in this Omicron last phase recently. But and we'll get to that again in a little bit, but not to the 37 level by any means. And of course, if you're wondering what was the nadir for for VIX, you can usually probably guess a couple of time frames. 
of the year and you usually would be right it could be either this time right now end of the year because this is usually a pretty seasonally seasonally weak time for volatility and also mid to late summer that's pretty much what we saw we saw the latter there july 2nd it's actually earlier than it normally is usually you're talking late july into august but 1507 was like the low closing print for vix of the year and that was on july 2nd vvix similar trajectory coming into today's show at about a 107 that puts it down 10 points from Monday's show. We topped out for the year, same time, January 27th, 157.69. That's a level, at 150 level, that's a level we visited many times over the course of 2020. And we got back to it pretty quickly this year in January, and then we kind of gave it back up. But then we got back there again. We did, unlike VIX, we got closer to retesting those highs in VIX. That was on December 3rd, 156.10. If you're wondering the low, not in July, like you might think. I thought it was around that time frame, but it was not. It was actually in April. The low for VVIX, 97.09 on April 7th. So VVIX could only just barely break the par, the 100 level this year, before it had to race back up. And that was actually in April. So that surprised me. Probably surprises you as well. VXX, the product we love to fade, 18.40 when we kicked off the show, down almost one and a half points from just Monday alone. Get this, VVX hit its high, or I should say VXX hit its high, 84.32. <laughs> that just sounds ridiculous for VXX, but that's where we were. You, you probably can guess now when that was, listeners, around that same time frame. A couple days later, actually. A little bit of a lag time between VIX and VXX sometimes. And in this case, it was on January 29th. So a couple of days after VIX and VVIX topped out. 84.32 and the low, if you're wondering, just pull up VXX right now, because right now is the low for the year. <laughs> of 18 and change so yeah crazy times in vxx ubxy pretty much the exact same story coming into today's show 1235 down almost one and a half points just from monday's show it hit its high exact same day january 29th 146 40 <laughs> that sounds ridiculous as well of course we had some reverse splits and everything else going on there and make those numbers seem a little bit different same thing with vxx but in general, this is, these are just crazy time. And, of course, the low, again, for UBXY, just pull it up on your screen right now because it's right now. That's pretty much the low for the year, the 12 handle out there. Uh, Vol Q, exact same story, 1780 on today's show, coming down about six-tenths of a point, so a little bit less than the other two products. High of 3220. Take a guess. Yep, January 29th, same day. And the low, 1413. That was on August 27th, so almost two months beyond VIX. So that's kind of interesting. Again, NASDAQ's kind of been a bit of its own beast this year, and that obviously bears that out. Didn't have a low around the same time as VIX did. So a lot to unpack. Well, let's go around the horn. Let's start with Uncle Mike. What are the thoughts, the trades, the trends, the developments from this insane year that stand out to you, Mr. Uncle Mike? One that I'm seeing – I'm sorry. I need to get closer to the microphone. One that I'm seeing – is it seems to me, and I don't have any statistical data to back this one up, the first thing that I'm seeing is that we're not as gappy as we were in 2020 or even in uh, most of the last three or four years, meaning that we're we're not having as many big gap ups and gap downs as we had had in the past, it doesn't seem, meaning that the futures don't move a ton overnight like they had been. We're getting a lot of our movement during the trading days. So that's one thing that I'm seeing. That I think is pretty interesting. Uh, the other thing with which I'm seeing is just the fact that we've held the VIX as high as we have when the market has continued to move higher and higher as it has. If you were to tell me we were going to have this big of a market uh, that we've had this year and that we've had uh, the VIX at the level with which it has been this year, uh, I wouldn't have th thought that that would have been done. I thought we would have had some uh, sell-off, so to speak, in the VIX if we were going to have this high of a market move. And then the other thing that really caught my eye is something that Sebastian said a few months ago, is that when we have sell-offs, we don't have as big of sell-offs because of the fact, this was his theory, so I got to give crop, prop, crops, props to the uh, the greasy meatball on this one. Uh, people already own a lot of puts based on the vol being so high, so we don't get that second leg of a sell-off quite as much. And so because of that, that could also be a reason why we've had a lot of uh, buying on the year is that the people, the panic sellers don't panic as much because they already have their puts in place. So those would probably be the three main things that I've seen so far this year that have really been um, uh, trends, so to speak. 
there is that crypto thing that we have going on, but uh, uh, I think you're going to ask me about my favorite strategy block, but I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to save it for that section of the show when we get to that. Sounds like a plan, sir. Right, let's go back around the horn to the rockingest of lobster. Mr. Rock Lobster, what trades, trends, oddball developments stand out for you in this mad year of 2021, sir? I don't think it would be 2021 without mentioning meme mania. Indeed, you the, cannot, sir. I uh, like uh, just one of the, <laughs> and I and I still think it's there to a small degree, but not like it was at the beginning of the year. I mean, if you look at some of the 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 like the spacs, right? 2021 was the year of the spacker. They they stealthily launched some SPACs in 2020, and then everybody discovered them in 2021. Look at the prices of where those were in like January and February. Insane valuations. Um, and I don't think any any of them have sniffed that value since then. I, I don't even know about the uh, – the last really fantastic SPAC, I think, was the Trump SPAC, right? Um, I don't – and I, I think that still has some value. Um, I don't I didn't really follow it, but I know that was it was another one. Um, so meme land and the power of uh, the power of the the retail investor to kind of get it all together on Reddit and pump a stock up. Um, I think one of the like I think right now, like Robin Hood is on my list for this year uh, because it's a it's a teenager. It's a buck and a half. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to make it pretty. Decent put rate. I don't know how if it could actually start to regain some of its luster, but you know, when when the meme kids liked it, it was a fifty some odd dollar stock. So, so you do have the ability for things to move. What I think people kind of are figuring out a little now is it's it doesn't happen like that <laughs> as often or as a matter of course, right? You can't you can't pump Robinhood up anymore. Now that it's just trying to be a company and you know struggle and do all the rest of uh, the stuff that it needs to do to be a company, so um, I think uh, what we'll what we'll start to see is uh, you know a, a kind of a, re, a some sort of return to investing. I mean, but like all of the themes, like like Mike was saying, crypto, like crypto crazy levels this year, right? After getting kind of smeared in 2020, a huge comeback. So this this ability for people just to, you know, to to want these crazy, insane gaps. Right. I think it makes individual options. Uh, I still think the the long gamma game, that's something we specialize in an option pit. I, I don't think that's going to go away. We might not have the crazy meme bill that we had before, but a lot of the things that were around. um are still here, right? So the Fed is going to start to pull out of the market. And I think we might also start to see some actual real, like when we sell off, we actually sell off. Um, what Mark said last time was, hey, he's right. If people are, you know, if, if traders still uh, have a lot of protection or whatever, um, like when every sell off was bought, every single one. So, I mean, uh, you know, a drop of more than 2% was a surprise. So, you know, we had them, we had a couple of 4% or 5% drawdowns because of the Omicron. Um, and I think, I think that as I will be surprised, hopefully knock on wood, because it's good for everybody, but I will be surprised if we see another like 5% decline, like we did in the queues from, from Omicron or something like that, from another COVID thing. Um, unless the government decides to like shut things down again, but it, it seems like there's not very much um, appetite for that. So I think those are like like stocks that just take off to the moon was one of the huge themes of uh, 2021. And if you've noticed, most of the stocks, except for what I'll call like, you know, the Nifty 7 plus maybe AMD and MU and a couple others, um, uh, maintain their level, right? Because the Qs, what, seven stocks are basically 40% of the Q market cap at least, I believe. So only seven out of 100 stocks, which uh, is, I don't know, I, I don't know how that's sustainable. So we'll see how that plays out next year. Um, but I, I think we still will see some volatility in the queues for 2022. Uh, but all we did was see record highs in 2021. Um, 
So that one, I would say, is I'm on the fence about that one. If if Qs if the Qs can continue to their run, I don't see how it does with the Fed raising rates and stuff like that. So, but I think those are those are the big the big themes. And normally, it's rare that uh, a theme from one year carries to the next, as we have seen. The COVID thing lasting two years, um, I think, is getting long in the tooth, and uh, and we won't see as much out of it next year. Of course, that would be good for everybody, but I also think its effect on the markets will start to decline. Yeah, you can't really talk about 2021 without the the madness that was the meme stock. I'm looking here at a photo someone shared. This was back from June. Someone took outside of Citadel HQ, which is down the street here, of pretty much the eight truck, I guess you can call it. It was just a, someone rented one of those billboard trucks and parked it out front of Citadel HQ. And it said it had a bunch of pictures of apes and it said AMC, we're still not leaving and all this other ape nonsense. <laughs> it's just hilarious. That was emblematic of, of where we were. That was still in June. But yeah, it all kicked off in January. In fact, I'm curious for both of you. Do you think we maybe hit peak? craziness of this year right out of the gate in the beginning because of course we had january 6 which was off the charts in terms of just completely who expected a a run on the capitol <laughs> on the six <laughs> someone sitting in the speaker's chair all that mad i mean but no one had that on their bingo card and that's how the year started then of course you had all the other madness that kicked off gamestop kicking off in January, VIX and every other ball product hit their apex for the year. So I asked both of you, did we hit peak crazy for the year right out of the gate in January? Maybe we'll start with you, Uncle Mike. Well, yeah, I think we did because that's possibly, it's no question one of the top five or top 10 crazy things I've seen on my 44 years on this planet. Um, was never expecting something like that to happen. But what's even crazier about that is that the market didn't tank from it. I mean, we sold off a little bit that day, but we really didn't drop that much. I mean, I was very concerned that we were going to, the markets were going to crash when something like that happened. And so the markets just didn't seem to care about that. And just the fact that uh, we had something like that happen, I mean, I know we restored order fairly quickly with that. Um, but still, the fact that we didn't have a crash from that, we're like one of the most secure, well-defended countries on the planet. And so there's just a handful of times that our country's been attacked, of course, 9-11, Pearl Harbor. And then when we have just, uh, we've had plenty of riots, that, that was more of a 2020 thing. But then 2021, we have a riot on what I would have thought would be one of the most secure places on planet Earth, and uh, it apparently was not that day. So I would say in terms of the craziness, that there's no question in my mind that was the craziest thing that has happened throughout the year, with a close second being the fact that the market didn't royally crash when that happened. Mr. Rock Lops, the same question for you. Did we reach peak crazy from an overall, whatever perspective, vol, general societal? <laughs> Did we hit it right out of the gate? Because everyone coming into this year, myself included, was hoping for a quiet start to the year, and we got almost diametrically the opposite, sir. Well, <laughs> well, I think there's also, you know, the regime change, right? Everybody's like, ah, everybody's freaking out. I mean, I had people calling me like, there's going to be a take like, oh, my gosh. So I think there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of agita <laughs> built in about uh, the transfer of power. Um, it's not like my Italian grandfather, agita. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, and ultimately things kind of went how they've gone every other uh, inauguration, to be honest, except for all the, the fences and the cops and stuff around the inauguration. Whatever. Um, but as of like, as far as peak going, right. So that what I like, so if, if the, normally my view is like, as long as we don't screw up American style capitalism, free market capitalism, the system we have, you know, I think stocks are a good place to put money because it works. So you got 225 or 30 or 40 or 50 years or however long, um, as a country where it works. So but if all of a sudden everybody's worried about that, the system might be broken or, you know, uh, irrevo ir irrevocably or something like messes with like kind of the foundations. And all of a sudden, I think that that's really what 
gave us the vol event. Everything by the end of the year, it's like, okay, well, we have this vaccine and things should be getting better. And that's mostly kind of how it went besides, you know, then they had meme stuff, but there was very few other, uh, except every once in a while, oh, you know, the vaccine's not as good or the COVID's this or the COVID's, COVID's that. Um, so I think, yeah, we did hit peak crazy. And I think part of that was, as you recall, remember, remember the crazy bid for Vol for the election, right? Um, and that was pretty significant, you know? And then we had the election and uh, it looked like Biden was going to win, uh, you know, at, well, after he uh, won. And then the Vol kind of came in a little bit and everybody started to be like, okay, things are kind of normal. And then you had the scare in January, right? They could be not normal, but then ultimately they were. So <clears throat> I think we, it was a an interesting year from that point of view. What I did find interesting is that the COVID era vol regime is still not gone. Because uh, normally I score a vol event by when you can go back to a low prior to the event. And we have not been able to sniff the 12 handle uh, in two years, really. Uh, we haven't been able to keep hold the 16 handle for more than a week or two. So that part is gone. My The big question is now with the Fed trying to get out of the market, will vol start to get low again? And I and I think that's a, that remains to be seen. Um, usually, historically, that's what happened. Like there's a freak out at the beginning, um, and then all of a sudden uh, – you have, you know, then people kind of get used to what's going on. And that's what kind of, you know, that's how vol goes down. But the fact that the Fed could always jump in and always make that huge move and, you know, try to direct traffic, so to speak. You know, that's a function of the last 10 years since uh, the financial crisis. I don't think it's a good habit, to be, to be honest, for the markets or anything. But I, um, <laughs> I think there's a lot of people that run the country that would disagree with that. But anyway, that's what we have. So in order to, I would like to see VIX get through, right? Because normally, historically, where we are, this is actually just like at the 50 percentile, like at right? 17 VIX, right? That's just, just the top of zone two. So, you know, if you break it up into quartiles, we're still in the middle, right? Even though it feels like it's relatively low, but historically, just in the middle uh, for all the samples for uh, VIX over the last 20 years. So. It's everybody feels like this is a low number, but, you know, we know it can go much lower. So uh, it's just everybody just be mindful of it that uh, we have bounced off the 16 handle all year. I don't expect that to change um, unless the governments across the globe get past the uh, the COVID thing. And I and from what I can tell, at least in Europe and Australia and some other places, they're still uh, they still can't. So I think it's it's here. And it's not going to go away, although I do think it will decline hugely in 2022. All right. Let's see what else is declining or perhaps moving out there over the course of this past year. Let's look really quickly. First off, how we're looking today. Uh, VIX coming into as of a few minutes ago. Again, not doing a ton of paper, 228,000 contracts. The ADV, remember I said it wasn't going to hang out over 700K for long. So enjoy it. It already is down. It's dropped about 50,000 from our last show. It's down about 674,000. It was around 729, I believe, on Monday's show. So already back below 700K. Spy at about 1.9 million. The ADB, five and about 5.5 million. Uh, the S, 600K. That's that's really light for the S. The ADB, 1.59. That'll be probably be coming in if we see more days like this. And IWM, 349,000. That's back to kind of its usual volume. So ADB back below a million again, 988,000. That'll probably be dropping back to earth. A bit again as well. Speaking of action, what were some of the busiest days of the year in terms of volume? Well, a great barometer for that, of course, is SPY. Where SPY goes, the market tends to follow. And we also we had a pretty much almost a, a tie for the busiest day of the year. It's within a few a few contracts here and there, both topping out at right at about a little bit north of nine point one, a little bit below nine point one million. So the technically the busiest day from an overall SPY volume perspective was on September 20th. So it wasn't that day in January and the other shocks. It wasn't November 26th. It was September 20th. If you're curious, that was kind of at the tail end of that sell-off we saw there in late September. S&P dropped from about 
44.70 down to about 43.40 over the course of that week. And the next Monday is when we saw the uh, the biggest volume day. We saw more sell off that Monday. The twentieth was a Monday, listeners. The VIX closed twenty five seventy one that day, so in the elevated range, back in the mid twenties range. We saw nearly four million calls going up, about three point eight nine five million calls. But the big dog, then again, this is something else we've seen a lot. The big volume days tend to be down days because that drives the put paper. We saw over five and a quarter million puts that day, adding up to about a little over nine point one million contracts on the day again most of that puts right behind it though was something a little bit more recent december 3rd this was kind of the tail end of the sell-off for omicron remember omicron kicked off around the 26th of black friday and we kept selling off that next week and then we kind of rallied a little bit this december 3rd was a friday and it was right after we had started the market had started to rally again after omicron and then that friday the legs got cut off from it again, and the market started selling off again. And that second wave of selling seemed to really spook people because we saw, again, pretty much almost the exact same amount of paper, a little more on the puts, actually, 5.71 million puts, 3.37 million calls, obviously less on the call side, total of almost 9.1, about 9.08 million contracts. On that day, VIX closed a little higher, almost 31, 30.67. So those are your two Busiest days, kind of a tie for number one, really, between December 3rd and September 20th. Let's look at the most actives now for today. And this is a lot of your frequent offenders, even at much lower levels. Number 10 today only cost you 204000 to break into the top 10 today. That's not a lot, listeners. I guess you to Amazon. Number nine, SoFi. I haven't seen SoFi in the list in a while. Back there, 229000 Number eight, Lucid, 246000 Number seven, AMC, 259 It is fitting that on our final show of the year, the Symbol Twins would be next to each other again. Because number six, we have AMD at 301,000. Number five, NVIDIA, 374. Number four, BABA, 386. Number three, NEO, 641. Number two, it's Tesla, 857. Number one, the big dog, 871. In fact, if I was going to say, if you look at this top 10 today, it's a pretty good representative sampling of what we've seen throughout the year. A lot of these names were frequent offenders. In fact, if there were some trends from our most active throughout the year, one of them is obvious. Apple remains the big dog. It gets the crown again this year. It was pretty much top of the list most days we did the show. A few names managed to unseat it. I mean, it could be beaten every now and then. Tesla did it probably with the most frequency. We also saw Ford topple Apple once. We saw Lucid do it. Even Sundial did it one day. So a lot of names could do it once. But Apple would always come back for the crown and take it back and say, get the hell out of here, kid. So Apple gets the crown for the top of the heap for volume earnings wise. If you want to hear a good breakdown of the earnings season and the earnings year and looking back on some of the surprises and everything else, check out the advisors option. We just posted that with Matt from earlier this week. We did a big look back on all of the earnings move and results and the surprises and shocks there. So if you want more of a deep dive into earnings vol, I encourage you to check out the advisors option as we head on into a quick look back, a quick recap of the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by the optionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. Let's get into it. Look back on the year that was from an odd block perspective. And there are a number of things that leap out to me from this year from an odd block perspective. Let's start with maybe the positive side. (laughs) One of the positive trends of the year and one of the overall just trading trends of the year was the line in the sand. Put this strategy, any given show, any given episode, roughly two out of the three were probably line in the sand puts. That just seemed to be the trade du jour. Everyone and their mother was selling these puts. And for the most part, they worked out. I mean, again, it's a bull year, so you could probably reasonably intuit that. But still, we saw the data this year that they all worked out pretty well. There were very few. We probably count them on one hand. Puts that really blew the doors off people in the wrong direction. And But outside of those, there was really a, a pretty good year for put sellers. If there was a not-so-good trend for the odd block for this year that we noticed, it was 
people putting on trades, even big winners, and getting the win early on and just never taking it off. That was a thing that just perplexed me all year long. You buy calls, you get the huge move that you want, you get it pretty early, and then you do nothing with it, and you sit and you sit and you sit, and the calls eventually expire. And I guess you got the stock that you wanted, I guess. But you could have done much better if you just sold it out and kept all that time premium that you had on the option. So we saw this time and again with puts and with calls and with whatever. Pick your poison. I lost track. We can go do a whole show just on money left on the table from this. But that was if there was a negative trend, I would say it was probably that. Uh, some names that were frequent offenders. Ford in the middle of this year really started popping up there. A lot of it too early. People were getting into the Ford train very early, we were talking about 17 half, 18 half, 20 handle puts in August and around that time frame, well before the move actually happened. So people blew a lot of money on upside calls until Ford finally made the move. So there were people there a little bit too early on that tip. Stone Cold, remember this one, STNE? This one was a frequent offender on the put side throughout the middle of the year, around June in that time frame. We saw a lot of Stone Cold on the show earlier this year. And for me, this is another one. I, I was convinced in my head this was 2020, so I almost didn't put it on my list. But I had to go back and check it. And then I realized, oh, my God, it was this year. That just shows this seems like it was a lifetime ago, but it was March of this year. It was that crazy Denison Mines train or train. <laughs> Mine train. That's a ride down in Disney. Denison Mines trade that we profiled in March of this. Actually, it was on February 11th. It was a March trade. And this one is still, to me, if I look at the annals of free money that we profiled, that we've just given you a gift of free money in uh, the option block. It's kind of hard to beat this one. It was just ridiculous. The stock at the time was trading about a buck, and someone just came in and decided to just make it rain money out here. They bought over 200,000 of the March two halves. They bought almost 50,000 of the Feb two halves, 40,000 of the April two. They bought the two half strike across the board for hundreds of thousands of contracts you could come in here and i did this i know a lot of you did as well you could and those, it was great because it was a dollar stock so the risk was low you know if you're trying to do some of these verticals in like an amc or others if you want to buy the stock obviously huge risk there if it's a 50 dollars stock or you have to buy a meaty call against it there's still outlay risk there this one the outlay risk was nominal and you could harvest all of this premium all day long sell two halves till the cows came home if the stock got up there you did pretty good. And if it didn't, you kept all that premium. And that premium came out very quickly because everyone discovered this. So it was a free gift to all of you out there, listeners. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you did well because that person did not. Denison never got there in that time frame by a country mile. So Mr. actually, at one point, one of these prints, the stock was 97 cents when they started buying the two halves. So insanity. Mr. Rock Lobster, what stands out to you from the year that has been odd block? Any trades or trends or things like that, sir? Well, I, I thought, um, remember there was, well, obviously there was the meme trend in the odd block when we started highlighting just the. I, I don't know what you're talking about. What is that? Paper. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you're like, what is that meme thing? Uh, like that, all that up. He's just, remember the volume on the. The, and the open interest still on some of these options that are, you know, uh, I, and I think one thing uh, normally, so light in the sand for sure as a successful trade, we saw that a lot. Um, but also just, you know, people buying calls that had, trying to be kind, but. You know, you're buying out of the money calls that had like no theoretical chance to make money. I mean, I guess it was a, a, a there's always a chance, right? But it was a pretty big of a sliver. Now, I don't think we have seen as much of that in quarter two as we did in quarter one. Um, there was just a lot where we would sit and kind of laugh that, wow, people were buying that. Now, there were a couple of times when the stocks did make some pretty big moves, um, but that was you know, the paper rarely was on it by then. Like the stock would make the move and then the paper would jump in. Um, so I, I think that's definitely uh, one thing uh, that we're seeing. Uh, I think the second part to the year, um, and I think this worked pretty well, is like we kind of got stuck around this 46, 4700 SPX. And I think we started highlighting more buy rights. Uh, we started seeing more rights <clears throat> and just people saying, hey, 
VIX is still like 19, 20, 21, whatever, we'll sell some calls, uh, which I think for the most part, that those strategies, I think that work pretty well. So I think it'll be interesting to see, because uh, it's always good uh, for the listeners out there, the option block just shows trends, you know, what are their, what are the trends that some of the big money's doing? Um, and I think uh, seeing more buy rights and things like that, uh, where you know large institutional holders are just happy with the with the income side instead of the gain side, I think we'll see that more uh, this year. I would guess just you know unless we have another huge growth catalyst for the S and P five hundred, but I think you'll see more of that this year. Oh, we had a listener chiming in with a good suggestion, which is another one I probably should have pointed out. He says, I think that the crazy Apple paper that showed up a few times this year in 2021, more than a few times, was wild. I look forward to it happening again in 2022. That was another trend. That's part of when I kind of talked about Apple taking the crown. That was kind of included in that. But yeah, that was definitely one of the reasons that Apple was at the top of the heap so many times. Some people out there, big funds probably, just got into that trend of gobbling up the near-term calls and it, it worked for the latter portion of the year particularly so they'll probably be back in 2022 we know who else will be back in 2022 is uncle mike so let's get his thoughts right now on the crazy year that was the strategy block it's time to dispense options wit wisdom and education it's time for the strategy block All right, Uncle Mike, you've joined us nigh on 52 times. I don't know if we've missed any strategy blocks, probably at least 50, I would say, that you've done this year. Of all the different doses of strategy that you've doled out over the course of this year, which ones really stand out and resonate to you right now, sir? Well, there's two of them that do. Uh, the first one is the one where I, it was on in on May 10th, I believe. I'm just trying to look through, make sure I got the dates right. But it was in early May to where I went on about how I thought Bitcoin was an awful long-term investment. Now, once again, I want to emphasize if you want to trade it in the short term, uh, if you feel you see something that makes sense to you in the near term, by all means, have at it. Go long, go short, whatever works for you. But as a long-term investment, I felt then and still feel now that Bitcoin is a horrible investment and that um, people who are using it as an inflation hedge or, oh, I'm doing something safe, I'm going to buy Bitcoin, saying, so, it's a nice safe investment because if uh, uh, the dollar goes away, then you got Bitcoin. It's a good safe investment. I, I think that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. And so I, I do just want to uh, emphasize that that was probably one of my favorite ones that I did during the year. And then, and then of course, uh, just by a stroke of dumb luck in the near term, Bitcoin went straight down shortly thereafter. So the long term buy and holders. Uh, they're doing okay because they know that they'll be all right with it, but the short-term traders are, uh, didn't do so well after that strategy block. And then the other one that really stuck out to me of just something that I've kind of added a lot to my own personal trading as well as for clients in general would be buying garbage. Uh, so in other words, let's say you got a, uh, a put spread on the SPX and uh, it's maybe uh, 200 points out of the money and you're going into the weekend and then you're just concerned with it. Uh, one thing that I've started doing a lot more of this year was just buying garbage, uh, spending a penny or something ridiculously low and buying either a half position or maybe a spread half as wide or just something really low and then buying the opposite side of the trade just for the weekend. It's kind of like taking the weekend off. And so I really, that's one that really sticks out to me. Uh, just because of the fact that I think it's a good tool to have within your arsenal, especially if you're a premium seller, you can apply this to uh, short puts, short calls, whatever the case may be. And by just having this, you know that if the market goes against you in a major way, at least over the weekend, you're safe. Now, keep in mind, if the market goes down only half as far as you think it did, then uh, you wasted your money on a hedge that won't work for you. But I explained that a lot in the strategy block from when we did that episode. But I think it's definitely something to uh, consider and something to keep doing. Not every time, uh, but if you're concerned about the weekend risk, it's a great way of mitigating it at a very low cost. So those are the two that really stuck out in my head uh, for 2021. And uh, looking forward to 52 new ones in 2022. 
What are some of the strategy block sessions that stood out to you, listeners? Are you still mad at Uncle Mike when he talked crypto off the ledge back earlier this year? Are there some other ones that stand out to you? Hit us up. Let us know as we go one final time around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, let's do Let's go around the block. I'll make it a dealer's choice. I mean, I think we're probably going to have a, a codified, maybe upcoming in the new year prediction type special for the new year. But if you guys want to start now, I'll, I'll let you guys choose what you want to talk about for around the block. Tell you folks what you're keeping an eye on. Is it for this final week to end the year? You want to go a little bit beyond into the new year, get a little bit daring? I'll leave that up to you. Let's start with you, Mr. Rock Lobster. I, I, one prediction this year, we will. I think we will see a 12 VIX this year for sure. Um, and also, I my one of the stocks I like for this year is Peloton. Uh, I think it easily could be up like 50% this year. So. Uh-oh, are you getting in the cult? you drinking the Kool-Aid with the home Peloton bike and stuff? I just, I just think as a like the value of the franchise, it's it's kind of become, you know, uh, it, it's in the lexicon now. I would say I think it's it's too cheap a franchise to be kind of a lexicon type, um, uh, a lexicon type stock. That just again my opinion, and this was one that I think that was like kind of one of the unicorns, and they just it was 170 bucks, and they just killed it. You know, it's 30, 37 bucks. So. I think that it has a chance to do very well this year. So that would be my, you're just going for a pick, like a stock pick. Uh, I'm very happy to, uh, I'm very happy to sell puts in that stock. Uh, Like I'm looking at the 27 level um, and that's what happens. We'll see what happens. If it starts to pick up, well, then I'll go buy a couple calls. Well, they killed Mr. Big, so they got to kill the stock, right? That's that's yeah, well, exactly. That was it. Like, they killed Big, they killed the stock. It's got to be a buying opportunity. Sorry. I will, I will say though, like you know, getting the the skinny from some of the moms at my kids' school, there is definitely a cult of Peloton out there. It's and it's pretty strong. So, it, if you're in the weeds, there, it has a, a, some some staying power. Definitely, people who are into Peloton are definitely into Peloton. I, I throw the cult around loosely but only half jokingly let's say there is a strong shall we say attraction to peloton out there mr uncle mike are you in the cult of peloton and what else are you keeping an eye on for the end of this year beginning of next year definitely not in the cult of peloton um i think it's a cool thought i guess but um i'd rather just go to the gym personally if i can so that's just me uh i'm gonna go out on a limb for 2022 and I'm going to go with four predictions for the end of 2022. SPX, 5,300. VIX, 11.41. Crude oil, $91.53. Bitcoin, 13,000. Wow. Okay, we need to get all those marked. I also need to go back, and I didn't have a chance to do this before the show. They need to go back to last year's end of year Palooza. Because the year isn't over yet, so we can't pay off anything yet, but to track some of those if we made any and see how they paid off as over. Uncle Mike going out on a limb. Uh, the Rock Lobster, not so much. She's getting more sucked into the cult of Peloton. But Uncle Mike, 13,000 Bitcoin. You're, uh, you're going to make some friends with that one. All right, listeners. Unfortunately, that music is now sounding for the final time here for 2021. But don't worry, if you want more in your ear holes immediately, stay tuned. I'll be back in about half an hour to wrap up the year of madness in Twifo. What were the top movers and shakers for the year in futures options? You got to tune in to find out. In about half an hour, you can join us live if you're in the secret club. If not, just hit next on your device of choice. This should be there waiting for you by the time you're done with the option block. And let's go back around the horn. Mr. Uncle Mike, if folks want to give you some umbrage about that 13,000 call in Bitcoin or anything else, where should they go? What should they do? Oh, you can give me umbrage in many places. Uh, Feel free to check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw. Uh, just reach out to me if you're looking for a financial advisor who likes the option product, who doesn't necessarily like Bitcoin on the long side. 
There you go. Mike can talk you into some options. You can talk him into his some Bitcoin. It's a win-win for everybody. And you all can just dive into Shiba together. It'll be a big party. You can kick it off. StCharlesWealth.com is the place to go. Check him out on the old YouTubes as well. And give him a follow on the old Twitters at Mike Tussauds. In fact, Mike's been getting a little bit more active on the old YouTubes. Maybe we'll we'll work diligently in the new year to help get some of that content to you. Uh, learning options with Uncle Mike. <laughs> and Mr. Rock Lobster, where should folks go if they want to give you umbrage about Peloton or anything else, sir? Uh, I just will say that I do like Mike's picks. Uh, I like those prices on all of them. So I wouldn't be too far away from any of that. So you're saying, with, know. you're saying with Tucson right now? I I I just I I, I like them. I, I would just say with. Yep. Just make I make it easy. Make it easy. You're that uh, guy in the back of the crowd. With that's you, Mister Rock. I'm just I'm the with guy. Loving it. <laughs> I'm the with guy in the back of the crowd. So when you're tired of uh, pillaring uh, Tucson over his Bitcoin call, you could just say that that damn Rock Lobster agrees with it too. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, oh, you can go to optionpit.com and, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're, are, we are growing. Uh, we are now also a financial publisher. Uh, just a great year. Our marketing team is really awesome. Um, Mark's been having a lot of fun. He's been doing a lot more media, putting out a ton of trades, lots of really good stuff. So, yeah, Option Pit's good. If you want to learn how to get your juice for free, uh, we have, of course, an option pick called the Trading Legion. We're running a special right now. You can do lifetime this year for the same price as an annual. Uh, it is our most popular seller uh, just because people want to learn how to get your juice for free. So if you want some uh, uh, learning how to do it live and getting some trade ideas and seeing how it works and seeing how to manage trades, uh, you get to follow me. Uh, and check it all out, uh, and people like it. So anyway, uh, just head on over to optionpit.com and put your learning on. There you go. Put your learning on optionpit.com. You like his piton puts? Maybe you like a hood better or something else? Hit him up. Let him know over there in the land of the pit. And like I said, that's going to do it for us for this year, for this show. We're not done entirely for the network. We'll be back in half an hour for TWIFO. Back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern, to wind down the year of volatility with volatility views. And, of course, back next year (laughs) with the option block. We'll see you then. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>